For the first time in nearly a year, the Panhandle currently has zero active COVID hospitalizations. KDB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, Unified Command has announced that the COVID risk dial has moved down to its lowest level since the fall. There are no active COVID hospitalizations and no county had double-digit new cases over the past week. PPHD officials say only 31 new cases are being reported this week, including nine in Dawes County, seven in Box Butte and Scottsville counties, four in Sheridan County, and one new case in both Banner and Dual counties. Four additional deaths were confirmed as well. Through Monday evening, more than 17% of the Panhandle's adult population has received the COVID vaccine. All Panhandle residents over the age of 18 are encouraged to get registered for their vaccination by heading to vaccinate.ne.gov or pphd.org. Well, Governor Pete Ricketts says the verification of COVID-19 variants in Nebraska does not mean immediate changes in how the state is working to combat the virus. Long suspected of being president in Nebraska, state health officials confirmed this past weekend that the presence of two variants, dubbed the UK and California variants, in samples checked through genetic sequencing. Ricketts says since the variants are generally more contagious, the confirmation just reinforces the need to continue safe practice. The vaccines work against these new variants, so there's no change with regard to what uh, we have to do with regard to getting people vaccinated. We want to get people vaccinated as quickly as possible. So because the vaccine will work against the new variants, but it does emphasize that we need to continue to practice all the good tools we have, avoid the three C's to be able to slow the spread of the virus while we get people vaccinated. Regarding the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine approved over the weekend, Ricketts says orders have been placed for doses for the state, and he's hoping to see some of those vaccines as early as this week. He says since the storage of that vaccine is more flexible, state officials will be looking for ways to best utilize those doses to help prevent needless deaths. Well, coming up after the break, Bill Boyer is in with a really nice Tuesday evening forecast. We'll have that right after the break here on KNEB.TV News. At Platte Valley Bank, we believe it shouldn't cost you money to access your money. That's why we offer free ATMs anytime, anywhere. Whether you are across town or traveling abroad, there won't be an added expense to access the funds in your Platte Valley Bank account. Free ATMs are just one of the great benefits of banking with us. Stop by to talk to one of our friendly associates to discuss what else Platte Valley Bank has to offer. New season and new fashion is in at Compliments for You and Your Home. Check out what's new from Tribal and Charlie B. From light layers for warm days and cool nights to reversibles that are a must-have for the season. Compliments has the style for you. With great looks come great deals. Compliments always has weekly deals to bring more style into your life. Get ahead of the trends and get the new shapes, shades, and colors this season at Compliments for You and Your Home. 1708 Broadway, downtown Scotts Bluff. This is KNEB.TV Weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Well, how about uh, clear skies again tonight? Nothing doing out there. Quiet weather conditions. Temps fall down into the 20s. Not going to be quite as windy tomorrow as what we were today. And a, really a very nice seven-day forecast coming our way. You're going to have to find uh, long and hard for something to complain about. A touch cooler on Thursday, but a fantastic weekend is coming. I guess if you want to complain, it's a little breezy at times. That is about it. Yesterday we hit 55. We did uh, several degrees better than that today after a morning low of 19. New month underway as we get started out for the month of March. 56 in Denver. There's a 62 still in Goodland. 63 McCook 
and in Hayes, 50s to near 60 in Nebraska. There's some chillier upper 40s there. Watertown over towards Sioux Falls and some 40s in the high country. But here in our region, we're 50s and 60s pretty much all around the region, mostly down into the 50s now. Ogallala at 58, 53 in Valentine, 55 in Mullen. Winds are light. Well, they've come down a bit, I guess, lighter than what they were. Still 15 to 20 at times, so a little gusty there uh, in a few locations. But for the most part, uh, it's pretty quiet out here across the area. Let's take a look at our bus stop forecast for tomorrow. Mainly sunny skies when you get on the bus. And we'll be in the 20s out there, so that's not too bad. And then on the way home, sunshine continuing. And look at that, it's 61 degrees. Pretty nice looking evening coming our way. Future cast, we're get out of the way here. There's just a few clouds uh, off in portions of Wyoming. That's about it. Otherwise, a few clouds sneak in towards sunrise tomorrow. That'll still cause skies to be mostly sunny. Lows are going to dip down into the 20s overnight. Now tomorrow, what little bit of clouds we have, those are quickly going to burn off in the morning, push off to the east. They're out of here and we have sunshine returning for most of the day tomorrow. Pretty nice day coming again here across the area. And as we go into late tomorrow night into early Thursday morning, a few clouds try to work their way back in and it will be a little cooler on Thursday than where we're at tomorrow, but cooler than low to mid 60s out there for many of us. Beautiful day coming tomorrow. Nothing coming in the rain or snowfall forecast over the next uh, day and a half. It's going to be pretty quiet tonight. Speaking of quiet, starry again, lows down around 26 for tomorrow. Lots of sun out there we will be in the low 60s for a high. Our seven day forecast, we continue uh, with some clouds around on Thursday. And again, we'll drop temps by about seven degrees or so into the mid 50s, right back into the low 60s Friday and circle Saturday right now at 68 degrees. With partly cloudy skies, we'll stay partly cloudy through the early parts of next week as well. Maybe by Tuesday of next week, temperatures trending downward. We might get a little more active by the middle part of next week. But until then, high and dry and quiet here across the Wyobraska region. Renewal by Anderson, proud of what we do. At Renewal by Anderson, we are a local family business. Everyone from our office and project management teams to the best installers anywhere works with our owner, Andy Stelflu, to give our clients a red carpet experience every day. We're proud to carry the best windows and patio doors for sure, but most of all, we're proud to help our clients improve their lives at home with a great investment. Contact us today. We'd be proud to earn your business. Renewal by Anderson, proud of what we do. At 21st Century Equipment, we're proud to introduce the new Build Your Own Tool. Build the John Deere you've been wanting and see how affordable it really is. Visit 21stCenturyEquipment.net to build your own compact utility tractor, mower, or gator. It's easy to add implements, attachments, and view financing options. Build the exact tractor for your needs at a price you can afford, all from the comfort and safety of home, with the new Build Your Own Tool at 21stCenturyEquipment.net. Hydrozen. Unplug and recharge. What is Hydrozen? It's total body relaxation. It's total body recharge. It's floating weightless on water. Floating your aches, pains, stresses, and worries away. Hydrozen is a revolutionary new therapy using Epsom salt saturated water as a way to relax and rejuvenate your body. And it's now available in Scott's Bluff. It is for most ages and has many benefits to the mind and body. Visit hydrozenfloat.com or call us at 308-63-FLOAT. Welcome back. The Scotts Bluff City Council has agreed to meet with Scotts Bluff School Board representatives to discuss the future of a new indoor swimming facility. During Monday night's City Council meeting, Interim City Manager Rick Kukon said Superintendent Rick Miles extended the invitation for the April 12th meeting to see if new life could be breathed into the former Splash Arena. It's a preliminary kind of discussion and something that uh, isn't set cast in stone by any means. There's some questions that have to be answered yet. And obviously, money is one of the biggest, so I would certainly recognize that. I certainly recognize that. There's been some effort put into it already. Um, the district at one point looked at some of the numbers, so there will be some refined numbers for you to take a look at. Kukan said the YMCA had been exploring an aquatic center option, but with a preliminary $12 million price tag, that plan has been put on the back burner. He also notes that the city has competing priorities with the aging Westmore Pool facility, but notes that the pool may be nearing the end of its life. Staying at City Hall as new city manager Dustin Reef addressed the council and laid out his vision for the first few months on the job. 
I am uh, excited about getting started, started to meet some of the staff and, and uh, you know, the next uh, 90 days or so, kind of what I'm looking to do is, is take an overall assessment of the city, both community and internally, and then come back to the council and, uh, and uh, work on um, some strategic priorities. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to meet with, with each of you individually um, here in the next you know, two weeks before the next council meeting. So we kind of discuss you know, each of you and we can get to know each other and kind of work through that process. And I'm going to do the same with the, the leadership team and then uh, work on getting out to all the city facilities and, and uh, trying to see all that stuff as the weather starts to warm up and that kind of thing. So um, that's really kind of where my priorities set for the first 90 days is just get an overall assessment of where, where, you, where everything stands and, and be able to come in with a more comprehensive understanding and, uh, as we go into some strategic outlooks and planning type stuff. Reef says he'll also be working to get out to all of the city facilities and meet department heads to get an overall assessment on where everything stands and get a more comprehensive understanding of the city's operations. And the City of Kimball will be interviewing a new finalist for City Administrator late next week. City Clerk Annette Brower says on March 12th, Administrator Applicant Jeremy Marshall will be interviewed at 6 p.m. at the Sage Brush. Marshall will be the only applicant as the second finalist had a, quote, change of life direction with family matters and has bowed out. Now plans for a meet and greet in council chambers at the city offices in Kimball for March 12th are set for between noon and 1 p.m. Well, straight ahead, Shabella Guzman in with a check in on Ag News. She'll have that in just 90 seconds. This year, W2 means we double. Reganis Auto Center will double your down payment on any pre-owned vehicle on their lot. Turn $500 into $1,000. Turn $1,500 into $3,000. Use that money to get out of your lease or a vehicle you owe too much on or to lower your monthly payment. For a limited time only, double your down payment only at Reganis Auto Center on East Overland and East 27th Street in Scott's Bluff. Your volume discount dealer. This chair is way too big. It's perfect for us. This one's tiny. That's cause it's mine. Hey, this chair is just right. This bed is way too hard. It's perfect for me. This bed is way too soft. Ah, uh, just what I needed. This bed is just right. So come on over to Leaves Heads. For more than 162 years, FNBO has been with you where you are. A bank committed to helping you earn more and save more. So you can do more, both big and small. It's what you can expect from the great big small bank. This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the FNBO Ag Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. The newly chartered Center of Excellence, or Bison Studies, grew out of the industry's need for research. Dave Carter, executive director of the National Bison Association, says after talks with the South Dakota University, they rolled up their sleeves to make the dream a reality. It took us about three years, but uh, last fall we formally established the, the center of excellence to be a, a national center to focus research not only on just the, the health of bison herds, but the interaction of bison and, and the grasslands. And how do we uh, continue to develop a high quality, nutritious meat product for, for the public? The Center for Excellence was chartered in September 2020 as a partnership between South Dakota State University, the National Bison Association, and the National Buffalo Foundation. The Center of Excellence for Bison Studies is headquartered at South Dakota State University's West River Research and Extension Facility in Rapid City. Carter says the National Bison Association sent out requests for proposals of research to be done at the center. 
Well, the the proposals that came in really ran the gamut. Uh, there were, you know, we divided them up into about five categories of, of bison health, uh, genetics, uh, bison in the environment, tribal, hoping to stimulate more production in, in tribal herds, and then also meat quality and, and marketing of bison. The center will focus on research activities to improve bison herd health and the economic viability of both private and tribal bison producers. For more than 162 years, FNBO has been with you where you are. A bank committed to helping you earn more and save more. So you can do more, both big and small. It's what you can expect from the great big small bank. The Verizon family is full of frowns because they're spending too much for their unlimited data and phones, while the Viero family is all smiles because they're getting four lines of unlimited data with two free Apple iPhone SE for mom and dad and two free LG K31 smartphones for the kids, all for just $100 a month. They're saving so much, they're able to get Fido. Find out how you can too at Viero.com or your nearest Viero store. Viero Wireless, keeping you connected. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar, brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Western CPAP Supply has earned an impeccable professional reputation within the Wyoming and Western Nebraska region. Helping you get a good night's sleep is our passion. Our amazing team understands sleep disorders from a personal and professional level. 
We use CPAPs and BiPAPs too, and sometimes it just helps to work with people who share common ground. Our accredited CPAP supply company is approved by Medicare and Medicaid and is in network with every major insurance company in the region. Western CPAP Supply, we're here to help. At Platte Valley Bank, we offer loans with competitive rates and quick decisions from our experienced lenders. Our team works hard to get to know you and your business. From ag to auto, home loans and everything in between, we're here to help. Stop by Platte Valley Bank or apply online to find the loan that is right for you today. And finally tonight, after serving the Valley for more than a decade, Scottsdale County 911 Communications Director Ray Richards is ready to answer the call to retirement. Richards stepped down after 13 years on Friday, with county staff saying goodbye with a reception for both him and Mark Sinner, who has also had a long career in criminal justice in the county. Richards tells KNB News that after a couple days of relaxation, he plans on staying active with the many community efforts that he's been involved in over the years. New equipment, upgrades, better equipment, faster, thinner, thicker, just, just a lot of things have, have come about. One of the commissioners says that we were able to take the communication center in 2008 from a rotary, a rotary phone issue into the 21st century with technology changes and upgrades. Richard says the comm center has made many great strides in assisting the public over the years as technology has progressed and that is expected to continue under new communications coordinator Tyler Rexis. He came to the Panhandle from Lincoln and has been on the job for more than a month and will share oversight duties for the comm center with Chief Deputy Sheriff Troy Brown. Now, Sinner stepped away from public service following a career that started as a dispatcher in the sheriff's office, followed by time with the Gehring Police Department, and most recently as a child support investigator with the county attorney's office. And on a final note, this will be my last broadcast for at least a couple of weeks. I'm undergoing knee surgery, and I'll be out of commission until mid-March. Scott Miller and Dave Strang will be doing double time on adding new content to KNEB.com, and hopefully I can get back to the anchor desk in no time. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you here in hopefully just a few weeks.